Hello, I'm Greg from IKEA from IKEA Mods, and welcome to another unboxing video, a very special unboxing video. And right in front of me, I have the second rarest Mac I've ever owned, um, and probably the second most valuable Mac I've ever owned, and once again, probably the most expensive Mac I've ever bought. Um, the reason why it's the second most valuable and the second rarest is because that prototype's got a lot going for it. But what's in this box right here is another iBook clamshell. I tend to get a lot of these things, but this isn't any ordinary clamshell. It's not a prototype, but it's also not made by Apple. It is an Apple iBook clamshell. It's a graphite, and that's about all I know about it currently. Um, but it got modified. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a Gemini iBook. And this was made by the Gemini company. It's a tablet. Um, they made these things into tablets for special needs people and the medical field. And this thing is so stinking rare that I've only seen one on eBay um, a few years ago. It was just a few parts of it, and that was it. It wasn't a complete system. And then I saw this thing on eBay about a week or so ago, and the price was high, but still affordable, but it was complete. It has every single thing except the original discs, but has all the original hardware, so I mean uh, software, so if the hard drive survived, we can back all that up. That's not a big issue. Uh, these things are notorious, though, for having the touch controls go dead on the uh, LCD, and I'm not sure how you fix that, and this probably has a dead touch on it, but it's still functional. You can use it as a, a really strange-looking desktop, um, and it works. And this thing, I'll tell you what, it's just its so rare. It's hard to believe that I found this on eBay, and the funny thing is, literally, a minute after I bought it, another seller posted another one. But it was made out of um, a pile of uh, clamshell parts, too. It just had the top case to it. Uh, so it wasn't a complete Gemini iBook. And uh, it was just the system itself. And that thing went um, about, uh, it went, when was it? Yesterday, it was sold for like $278, which is a very good deal for one of these. But then again, it's not the complete system. This is the complete system. Everything that came with it, I think, is here, I hope. We're gonna find out, we're gonna unbox it, and uh, it, I'm excited to do it, so let's get to it. Okay, so if you've noticed this box is a little wet, it's pouring rain outside and I had to carry it in. I don't think that hurt anything. I don't think it got into the box, I hope. So we're going to open it, and I can already see through the box that there's some packing peanuts, so I'm not going to dump it sideways, because I'm not stupid. So, let's open it up. Yep, lots of packing peanuts. So let's see if I can figure out how I can pull this out of the box without making a mess. Or cutting my finger off like I almost just did. Okay, it's a box within a box. So if I pull this box out carefully, I will try not to dump this everywhere, but I probably still will. I think the seller knew just how valuable this thing was. Although I think it came from a charity. It's where I get all these. My prototype was from a charity too, I think. I can't get it out of the box. This is going to get a mess. Okay, I'm going to have to put it on the floor. Sorry. I'll speed this up. It's not a big mess so far. Okay. 
Okay, there's a lot of packing peanuts all over the floor. I gotta clean this up. I hate packing peanuts. They don't really help. And people think they're magic and can protect things like a uh, Power Mac G5. I'm still not happy over that. And the static is just amazing on this. Okay, that's, that's most of it. Let's make sure there's nothing else in the box. Doesn't appear to be. So let's put the box up inside. And let's try and open it again. Oh, great! More packing peanuts! Ooh! I'm trying not to make a mess here, people. It doesn't help that they're all staticky. Okay, I think this is the system. Set that to the side. Pick all these peanuts up. Friggin' friggin'. Oh! Where the hell do these keep coming from? Okay. I did not know it came with a carrying bag. That's neat. Assistive Technologies Incorporated. So this is probably the bag it originally came with from the person's uh, and sold this or set up for the original owner. Okay, everything else must be in the bag. and dump more peanuts everywhere. So, let's see what's in the bag first. Nothing in the back. What is there? I feel something. What is this? A bunch of zip ties. That's interesting. Okay, there's nothing in the back. What's in the front? Start here. Nothing. There's something in here. Okay. Graphite keyboard. Gemini iBook User's Guide. So you can, can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Assistive Technology Incorporated. Gemini was apparently a branch of that company. I did not know that. Now I do. So this was the original bag that came with it. And this is how you set it all up, make it work. That's what the system looks like. You'll see that in a second. This is really neat. Got shipping instructions. It's cool. <laughs> it's got the original shipping instructions. There should be a mouse and something else in here. Okay. Oh, that's neat. This did not come with it, but now I have. I've been looking for one of these. This is a Bondi Blue Macaulay mouse, which uh, was an improvement over um, the eye mouse. This was the improvement over the Puck Mouse, of course. It feels normal. And this is definitely Bondi Blue, and it has the white and blue ball like the Bondi Blue um, iMac does. That's, that's neat. So that's not the original mouse. This probably came with the Puck Mouse. 
or it might have came with a McCallum mouse because um, people that need assistive technologies probably uh, needed something more mouse shaped. A bunch of reflective dots. Don't know what that's for. We'll see. A cable tie. Okay, so there's something missing here. Where's the stand? Is it taped to this? It must be taped to this. I think I see it right there. The stand is the rarest thing because they never uh, stayed with the system. So we're going to get to the stand with the uh, knife that I don't want to pull up. Uh oh. Where'd I put the knife? Ah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's the stand. It looks like it's still connected to it. It's a little sticky. It has aged. I never thought I'd hold one of these in my hand. And the handle still works, too. That's neat. Now, what this is, there's no keyboard or anything in it. The place where the keyboard would have been is uh, where the touch LCD is. And uh, this rubber apparently was originally transparent, not uh, urine yellow. <laughs> it, it's aged over the years. Probably can't retro bright that. It's some kind of rubber. Um, can't really do much about it. So let's see if we can figure out how the stand comes off here. It looks like it's actually attached to it. It is. The stand is screwed into the case. I've never seen one with the stand. I guess they took them off usually because it was annoying. Okay, well here's the stand. This is a Gemini iBook. This is really, really neat. And <laughs> I like that. This thing, um, they had to relocate the USB port. So they put do not remove right here where the USB port would have been. And that looks like some kind of weird, like this plug right here continues some kind of connection, and it's just strange. Uh, but yeah, you got the regular video audio out, FireWire 400, non-existent USB, uh, 10 100 Ethernet, dial-up modem, and then on the back... We have a bunch of things that I need to figure out what they are. Um, here's the power button. It doesn't power on. The battery's dead, of course. Uh, another headphone jack. It's weird. Speaker jack. A uh, remote control switch 1-2. have no clue what that is. I'm not even holding it in the camera frame. Switch 1-2. Then this, I think, was for remote control 2. It's some kind of accessibility thing. Um, and then the USB 1.1 is on the back. So now, just imagine carrying this around like that. That's, uh, yeah. So now, see how this thing works. This, you pull it. Yeah, it looks like you pull it. Like this. Press the button in. Ah, press the button in. Like that. Oh, and it's got an optical drive too. This uh, graphite has faded. It's more of a green color now, but it still works. So 
There we go. There's the Gemini book standing up. I think this is actually stereo speakers. I'm not 100% sure. It might still be mono, but have two speakers in it. I don't know how they did that. So what I'm going to do right now is set this up and read the manual a little bit and see if I can figure out how this thing works. So I'll be right back. Okay, so reading through this real quick, it did come with a Macaulay mouse, as you can see here. That might be the original mouse, but they didn't color match it. It's strange. But that, that looks more like a regular mouse. It looks like it's the same shape. So, here we have a uh, USB port. This right here, that uh, controller port, is for a wheelchair. It's uh, to control it by a joystick or something like that. It says to see page 28. Um, and the switch jack is for remote power and on. Neat. So, what we need to do is... Let's go to 28 real quick. I want to read that. How do I set my Gemini up to work with my wheelchair? That is interesting. Pretty darn neat. You apparently can use the mouse as a joystick for the... That sounds really dangerous, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, okay. That is, that is neat. Okay, so I'm going to set this up now the way it would be set up if you had it in desktop mode. And then we'll zoom into it and uh, finish filming it. Going through this, I just realized there's no yo-yo adapter. Come on, guys. <laughs> it's fine. I've got a ton of them. So I'm going to go find one. Okay, so it's time for the first power-up. I've got the yo-yo plugged in over there. The keyboard's plugged into the top. And we'll power up and pray to God it boots. But everything's hooked up. The keyboard's plugged in. The mouse's plugged into the keyboard. We're just going to hit the power button and see what happens. It sounds like an iBook starting up. It is one dim screen. This is so strange to watch. It's got 9.1 on it. Wow, it's got a lot of extensions in it. wonder if I run this display calibration pro program, if it would fix it. Speaking dynamically pro. Okay. So this is for people that can't speak properly or can't speak at all. Um, this would be similar to like a system that Stephen Hawking would have used where... Time error is not going away. There it goes. So. Uh, speakers suck at this thing, or they're just not up high. Make buttons. Design, use, blah, 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 blah. Um. We have a keyboard volume control, and I can't think of how you would turn the volume up on this thing. Um, what is the shortcut for volume control? Um, nope. 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 <laughs> it's annoying. Um, volume, audio, something, sound, main volume is all the way down, oh, it's better. 
Wow, those are powerful speakers. So let's uh let's go. Read it. Doesn't work super great. Find. Yeah, the touch is not working at all. This is a uh, pressure sensitive, I think. Is not working. It did not type one of those things in there. Hey, how about that? Okay, so let's uh, close this program out. We have a lot of different things on here. We'll go into more detail about this in the future. I just want to experiment with it and see if I can get the screen to work. Um, I'm going to try to see if there's something in the user guide about it really quick, and uh, then I'll come right back. Okay, how do I calibrate the touch screen? The touch screen interprets your touch and moves the cursor, blah, 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 blah. By the way, there is a clear insert you can put right here that has holes in it. Um, it's kind of neat. Uh, there's a small picture of it right there. Protects the screen and uh, for certain programs, it, it prevents you from pressing other parts of the screen. Wish that came with it, but I think that was an optional thing. But this rubber guard here was apparently here to uh, help hold that in place. It's kind of neat. So, select control panel from Apple menu, then select Gemini touchscreen. Control panels. Gemini display touchscreen. For best results, you choose three point calibration. Hit calibrate. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, touch screen is indeed broken, but that's not a huge deal. It happens to all of them. Uh, I just hope I can figure it out or someone can figure it out. I might trust Colin fixing this better, more than I would. Maybe Jay Bry, but eh, I don't know. I might do it. This is just a system that it's it's definitely going to be harder to take apart than a prototype. So if I break it, I'm going to be very sick. Uh, it's going to kill me. So it will not calibrate. There's no troubleshooting for calibration here. The switch was uh, some kind of... Uh, spinny round pop thing um it's it's neat this is a uh, pretty cool okay well we can't do that it sucks cancel well maybe i, I didn't see the other menus there touch modes If I had a stylus that I could try it with, um, it might work with a stylus. But who knows? Yeah, it's not doing anything. But hey, I can draw on it. Yeah, those speakers are loud. Ooh, that's loud. 
Okay, so I see why the volumes were down to almost completely to the bottom. Um, and we'll have to delete a lot of personal stuff that's on here. Uh, but it's got a lot of things, a lot of personal things, like someone's homework. Uh, <laughs> I don't need their homework. What else do we have here? The Gemini keyboard. Good morning, Gemini keyboard. G R E G H E L O. That's cool. Ah, uh, what else do we have here? Gemini display. It just controls the brightness of the display. I guess the regular display settings do not do anything on this. I'm wondering what this would do with OS X. And I wonder, I wonder if there was Gemini programs for OS X. I have a strange feeling there wasn't. But I could see if someone could find them for me. I don't know if I could. Um, let's see here. Gemini switches. This is for that puck thing. Um, and also this is, I think, the menu where you can control a wheelchair with it, too. It seems really, really safe. Well, this is smart. That is loud. What do we have here? Okay, this gives you shortcuts for keys. Cool. Smart click. I don't want to uninstall it. Hmm. It's got a lot of interesting things on here. Is there any other Gemini things I missed here? Headphones. Headphones only speakers off. We'll turn those off. I want to leave those on. This is really cool. About this computer. Let's see what the specs were on this thing. It's got 192 megs of RAM in it. So that would need upgraded. I don't know how you do that. It is slow. It is quite slow. Okay, so this is the 466, just like my prototype. Um, you gotta figure out how you take one of these apart. This is just a regular old second generation, uh, special edition. Let's see if the optical drive ejects. Yes, it does. And yeah, this is a DVD drive. It's got that faceplate like on my prototype, only my prototype's faceplate literally is a prototype faceplate. But um, they're screwed in. I never knew that the DVD drives had the faceplate screwed on. I, I know now. But um, yeah, this is just a normal second generation clamshell with a touch screen. And these probably aren't stereo, but they're... Um, they're really boosted. They're loudspeakers. They're loud for sure, too. Um, but yeah, I want to really, really quick just make sure this will go into target disk mode. So let's shut it down. If this can go into target disk mode, I can back it up without having to take the entire thing apart. So, power. Okay, yeah, that's loud. T. Hey, nice. So I can back it up with the FireWire port. We're good with that. That is awesome. So um, let's just boot it back up. I'm going to return the speakers down, so I'll blow my eardrums out. Woo, it's loud. Once this finishes booting up, I'll read this while it's booting. I'll speed this up for you guys. Um, we'll uh, wrap up the video. 
<laughs> Warning! Do not use any substances that contain isopropyl alcohol. It can damage the case. I never knew that. I clean everything with IPA. Hmm. Okay. Okay, here's the... If your touchscreen does not respond stuff, it basically says to call ATI technical support. ATI. Oh, yeah. Assistive Technologies Incorporated. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's loud. Your mouse and the keyboard do not respond, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, basically it says there's no way to troubleshoot it. You have to call the company. And it's going to make it fun trying to fix it. Okay. So, let's close this out. Sound. Why isn't it going down? There we go. Cool. Check. Does this have sound? Built in mic? No, it has no mic. Okay, guys. Well, I think that's it for now. We will pick this up in the PowerPC series when I get it totally backed up uh, multiple times. So just in case this hard drive goes, I don't lose anything. Um, and just in case the backup goes, I don't lose it still. I'll also be uploading it online too. Um, of course, without all the, you know, personal stuff. Uh, but I will be uploading it online eventually because I'm sure someone will need this one day. Uh, they'll get one of these and not be able to know what to do with it. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a really neat system. It needs some TLC. It needs cleaning. And I can't use isopropyl alcohol now. Uh, now that I know that, that's it's interesting. I never knew that. Um... It must be the rubber casing. Who knows? But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this Gemini iBook. This thing is really, really neat. And I can't wait to play with it um, once I back it up. I'm not doing anything until I back it up. Um, yeah, that's the end of today's video. Don't forget, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com. So if you have an Apple device you'd like to sell, just go to SellYourMac.com slash RecMods and sell them something. It will help me out and it will help you out because you'll be making money. And also don't forget, I now have a Patreon where I release these videos a day early. If you want to help support me and buy things like this, uh, go over to Patreon and help me out. You don't have to. The channel still helps me. As long as you're watching some ads, uh, you're watching me getting my name out there, it still helps. But if you want to go in the extra mile, hit, uh, check out my Patreon. There will be a link at the end of the video and also in the description below. And this has been a Red K Mods video.